I need you to be honest with me, even in the balcony, be honest, okay? If, you, if this is you and you don't put your hand up, you're lying. Are you ready? How many of you have gone outside of your house or your apartment and your zipper has been down? You forgot to put it up. Raise your hand. Come on, come on, put it up. Lots of hands in the balcony. How many of you are glad somebody told you your fly was low and you needed to zip it up? How many of you have ever had food in the tooth and somebody gone like this to you? Husbands, you know this one, okay? You can relate to me. How many of you husbands have to tell your wife when she has lipstick on her front teeth and you go like this? <laughs> Doesn't mean you want to kiss her. It means wipe your teeth, okay? Or she has mascara and you go like this. Right? Come on, we know the signs, right? Okay? My wife has a sign, she goes like this, which means I have a booger coming out of my nose, okay? That's the truth, okay. Am I allowed to say booger? No, I'm not? Okay, snot. Do you know that when you're out with your honey and your snow starts to runny and you think it's funny, but it's snot? So, okay. Do you know that Mary had a little lamb, she tied it to a heater? Every time the little lamb turned, he burned his little cedar. Do you know, okay, never mind. We'll just go on to the sermon now, here we go. Aren't you glad that somebody told you to put your zipper up? Or aren't you glad that somebody told you there's food there and you look gross? Or aren't you glad that you got a little doo-doo coming out of your nose, whatever you want to call it, and somebody says, you should wipe that so the rest of the world doesn't see it. If we're so glad about that, why aren't we glad about sharing the gospel which has eternal value? The zipper doesn't have eternal value. The boogie doesn't have eternal value. The tooth, the, it will eventually leave the tooth and go somewhere else. Yet the hardest thing in life to do is to witness. And it's brutal. I've only met a handful of Christians who say, oh, it's so easy to witness. It is picking hard to share the gospel of Jesus. Why? because all hell doesn't want you to share it. You have all of hell against you. Number two, you have all of society against you. We are not popular out there, okay? We are not popular. You do not get credit out there for being Christian. Although it's the Christians who run the biggest charities, it's the Christians who run the biggest food banks, it's the Christians who run the biggest clothing banks, all this stuff, but we don't get any credit for anything. So Jesus comes along and he says to his disciples just before he goes up heaven, I'm gonna give you my last words. You'll receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you and you'll be a witness. And they went to Jerusalem, and they got in the upper room, and they prayed for 10 days, and nothing happened. They did not have a clue. Jesus didn't say you were going to speak in tongues. Jesus didn't say anything. All he said was, you're going to have power. This Peter, who denied Christ three times, he's in the upper room, and he's going, I'm not leaving until I get something, because I'm still the old Peter. James and John are going, well, we don't have anything yet. I don't feel any power. No, neither do I. We're staying until we get something. And all of a sudden, on the 10th day, the Holy Spirit came down. They started speaking in tongues, which is absolutely amazing because the tongue is the most unruliest member of your body, and yet they start speaking in tongues. But then all of a sudden, what happens? They all of a sudden are speaking in tongues, all these people going by the window and hearing this testimony of God with their tongues, and then Peter goes out, and all of them, 120 with Peter, lead thousands to Christ. So Jesus 
what he says in Matthew, and I love it, Matthew 9, 35, Jesus went through all the town and villages teaching in their synagogue, proclaiming the good news. That's exactly what witnessing is of the kingdom. And healing every disease and sickness. You were made to pray for people who are sick and diseases be gone. When he saw the crowd, he had compassion on them because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without shepherd. And then he said to his disciples, the harvest is plentiful, but the workers few. Ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send workers into the harvest. So what I want to do is try to help you make witnessing easier. But here's the truth, it's not. But let me give you a first, first number one thing. I personally cannot witness without a daily Holy Spirit encounter. This is why I, I, I can't even start my day without a Holy Spirit encounter. I am more concerned not what I say to God as much as what God does to me. To be still and know that I am God, to be able to have the Holy Spirit come and charge me. You, last night I charged my phone, this morning I charged my iPad, and I charged another iPad. And the fact is, is I fill my car up with gas, I ate in order to have some energy. The principle is, if you want to witness, you need the power of the Holy Spirit. You can do it on your own, but you're not going to get anywhere. But here's the craziest thing, when you have the Holy Spirit power, all of a sudden, boom, you start to witness like Jesus. What did you, what's the scripture say in Matthew? It says, when he saw the crowd, he had compassion. He did not have compassion because he just had, com no, it was from the Holy Spirit. When was the last time you were so passionate for people, you had to share Jesus? You had to share Jesus. Let me share this with you. To this day, I still have fear, and I still get nervous. And when Jesus had passion, he started to see that they were harassed, helpless, sheep without shepherd. When did you start to see people the way Jesus saw people? So we have the Holy Spirit encounter, we start to witness like Jesus. Well, what, what are the elements of witnessing that, that you need to know. Well, the first one is conversation starters. Let, let's just deal with how to get into a conversation so you can witness. Jesus said, I will make you fishers of men. In Matthew 4, he says, come, I'll make you fishers of men. What is the key to fishing? Bait. You can put a hook in the water until you're blue in the face. The fish aren't gonna bite but you put a worm or bait on it, and all of a sudden the fish come along and they bite that bait and they got the hook. Bait, bait. I, I, when I'm in a taxi cab, which when I travel, I take a taxi if, unless I can do public transit, and, and I just, it helps me. I, I'm in a taxi cab yesterday, and the guy who's driving me, uh, I said to him, so what country are you from? And he told me. Then I said, so what religion are you? And he told me. And then I said, well, what do you believe? Three conversation starters. From there, I was able to share what I believed. Uh, there, there's, there's many different conversation starters. Example, one of the things I use all the time is, so do you go to church or to a synagogue or to a temple or to a mosque? And the and, and, and majority of Toronto say, no, I don't. Or, yeah, I go once a year. I, I use a, a conversation starter. So can I ask you something? Do you think there's life after death? And, and you know, and people, I, I don't know. I've never thought about it. But the bait, the being able to, to, to open up a conversation Yesterday, I was on an airplane, I was flying into Toronto, and I got on the airplane, oh, it was so nice. I was one of the first people on the airplane, I don't know why. And, I, and I'm sitting in my seat, and I'm pulling out my bow headset, and the cordless bow headset, and when you put them on, you don't hear anybody, okay? 
And it's, it's a gift from God. Okay, it's a gift from God. And I went to put on my headset and I heard in my heart, because I had a Holy Spirit encounter that morning, don't put your headset on yet. Wait until the person sits down. And this guy who's a couple years older than me, he sits down and all of a sudden, I knew I needed to do a conversation starter. Why? I didn't want to witness, I didn't have the passion or compassion, I'm just being transparent here, like Jesus did, and I felt guilty, but I knew in my heart I needed, so I said, hey, how are you today? And I leaned over a little bit, hey, how are you? So it looks like I'm concerned, which I was. And he says, fine, how are you? My name is, and he told me his first name. And it's like, okay, here we go. And all of a sudden, we started to just talk, like just chit chat. And when we're taking off and we're going up in the air, he closed his eyes and he fell asleep. And I thought, this is a Jesus moment. And I put my headsets on. 20 minutes into the flight, the flight attendant comes along and she wakes him up. Why did you do that? And she wanted to know what he wanted, and he wanted, I don't know what he wanted, he wanted some alcohol. And I, I got my Diet Coke. And I knew I had to take my headset off. And all of a sudden I said, so you said you were doing great, so tell me the truth, are you really doing great? And he looked at me and said, no, I'm doing beep, beep, beep. And I said, why? Conversation starter. I mean, one of the easiest conversation starter you can do is, so how are you really doing, seriously? Everybody loves to talk about themselves. And this guy starts telling me all about his problems he has in life, and man, he has huge problems. I was like, oh. We opened a huge can of worms. I mean, huge. Enough for me to want to order alcohol too, but I don't drink. <laughs> I went through three Diet Cokes trying to keep up with this guy. And all of a sudden, I go to the next one. I'm listening to him, but I'm also listening to the Holy Spirit because I'm praying. Lord, what am I going to do? Like, this guy needs major counseling. This guy needs major, like, hello. And I'm praying, so I'm listening to him, and I'm making sure I got, I, now people, don't, don't, don't mock me, but my attention span is minus 50. So for me to look at him, I have to work at it. But I want him to know I'm listening to him. So I'm like this. Now, part of me is saying, keep looking at him so he thinks you're listening to him. <laughs> and the other part of me is saying, listen to him so he knows you're listening. And the other part of me is saying, oh God, help me. Let him go back to sleep or let me, I, and all of a sudden, he stops halfway through because I'm praying to God, listening to him and watch, and he says, so what do you do for a living? You're pouring your guts out and then you stop and say, so what do you do for a living? Now, for you, you can answer this easy. I'm a teacher or I work in accounting or I'm a carpenter, right? I got the worst job in the world. Hi, I'm a pastor. <laughs> so I look at him, I go, hi, well, you won't believe this, but I'm a pastor of a church. Holy beep, beep, beep. I know you can't believe I'm a pastor. I'm good looking, I'm smart. I know, seriously. And he looks at me, says, no wonder you're so good at listening. <laughs> and I'm going, I'm killing myself trying my best to listen. I, I'm terrible at listening. Ask my wife. And then all of a sudden, he says, so why do you want to be a pastor. Are you ready? It's not the first time people have asked. Matter of fact, I ask myself that question every day. <laughs> so I have a 30-second testimony 
because I know people are going to ask me this. I'm prepared. Here's the truth. I didn't want to be a pastor, but Jesus transformed my life. He's not a religion. He's a relationship. He came into my heart, came into my life, and to make it short, I was transformed so much by Jesus, I couldn't be anything else but a pastor. And all of a sudden, he looks at me, and he goes silent, and he goes, whoa, that spoke to me. 30 seconds or under. I didn't have to go, now let me tell you about hell, or let me tell you about the scriptures, or let me tell you about, uh, you know, it just, 30 seconds, and he knew it was from my heart. I mean, here's the craziest thing. You work on your 30-second testimony. Work on your one-minute testimony. I have a 30-second, a one-minute, and a, a two-minute. I used to have a five-minute, but it's terrible. I got rid of it. And also, people don't want to hear you longer than two minutes. And all of a sudden, there's many times when I'm witnessing where I get to share Scripture without them knowing I'm sharing Scripture. Like I, I said to him, you know, uh, the, John, the book of John in the Bible tells you that God loved the world so much that he gave his son. That when you and I believe in him, we're not going to perish, but we'll be transformed and have eternal life. I make the Scripture personal. I always start off with John 3.16. I never start off with Romans 3 where it says, you know, for all of sin. I, you don't be negative. You start positive. I mean, if they only get John 3.16, well, guess what? That's the entire gospel. Okay? I, I mean, the whole gospel is in one verse. And what happens is sometimes they ask, now let me share this with you. In all the years I've been witnessing, which has been ever since I'm 13 years old, and I'm 66 now. I have never, ever once gone through all the scriptures. I've never. But you do have them in case. Example, when somebody says to me, well, I believe there's other ways, I say, well, you know, according to my Bible, it's John 14, 6, it says, Jesus said, I am the way, truth, life. Nobody comes to Father God except through him. There's only door number one. There's no door number two or three. And I always personalize it. I never throw it back in their face. L l let me tell you what happened. You always leave them with something. Usually, if it's short, I leave them with God bless you or God bless you, I'll be praying for you. But yesterday on the plane, because I carry these steps uh, to peace with God in, in my satch, and it was under the seat, just, you know, 20 minutes before you land, you always hear ding, and then you hear the flight attendant, we're coming through the cabin, we're gonna be collecting everything, please get ready to hand in all your garbage and all your, okay, so they're coming through the cabin, and so I go down and I pick this up, and I said to them, you know what, you're going through a lot of trouble and problems, and I'm so sorry, I'm going to be praying for you. But I said, I'd like to give you something. This, this is my testimony. This explains what happened to me, and it was written by Billy Graham. Now, he's dead, but it's worth reading, and this, this changed my life. And I'm, I, I just, could you just take it and read it? And the guy looks at me and says, okay, just give it to me. And he starts looking at it. I thought he's going to hand it back. He goes, yeah, I'll read it. And I'll probably phone you this week and talk to you about it. Now, now here's the craziest thing. Are you ready? I, I'm, I'm, you just got to be sensitive to the Holy Spirit, but you got to be sensitive to, to him too. So there, there's three things I, I give to you, okay? Number one. And I, I love this. Are you ready? Here's the application. Appli sermon without application is useless. Practice. 
practice with somebody. Now, if, if you're practicing with another Christian and that other, that, uh, you, okay, you be the sinner and I'll be the Christian, I'll witness to you. Don't be a stupid sinner, okay? Like, when you die, where are you going? I, I, nowhere. Like, be a good sinner. Like, be a normal sinner. Don't, don't, I'm going to become a frog. You know, like, it just, don't, don't, you understand if you're practicing. But, but let me tell you about practicing. Uh, around 20 years ago, or probably less, I, I was speaking and I was telling uh, the church about practicing. And my wife, she, she went back to our house. Now, she knows everybody on the, the block, okay? Nobody knows me at all. Nobody. I walk down the street every day. I walk all through my neighborhood. Nobody knows. They all know her. Hi, Shelly. Hi, Shelly. Hi, Shelly. Who's that? That's my husband. Oh, nobody ever asked me even my name. I'm just Shelly's husband. And all of a sudden, she goes over to the neighbor, and the neighbor says, you want coffee? And Shelly says, sure. So they sit down, which the neighbor and her are good at, sitting and drinking coffee and talking. And she looks at our neighbor, and she says, um, Billy wants me to practice witnessing to non-believers, and you're a non-believer. Would you mind working with me on this? Because you can tell me how to improve my witnessing. And, and, and the neighbor who, who loves Shelly said, yeah, sure, I can help you. She says, I don't, I'm not a Christian, but I, I can give you input. She says, okay, what we're going to do is I need to start with conversation thing, okay? And so I'm going to ask you, so why aren't you a Christian? And the neighbor looks at her and says, that's a good way to start a conversation on this. I'll tell you why I'm not. So she starts talking blah, 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 blah. And then Shelly says, well, Billy would like me to work with you on this book. So I'll give you this book. And, and so Step to Peace, God, been around for eternity, as long as Billy Graham. And, and, and so Shelly and her start to work through it. And Shelly starts presenting Steps to Peace with God. And she starts to tell Shelly how she can present it better. Now listen to this. This is absolutely insane. Shelly gets to the end and says, okay, I'm supposed to say to you, would you like to pray the, the prayer of salvation? And her, the neighbor said, yes. And Shelly says, yeah, that's what you're supposed to say. The neighbor says, Shelly, I'm not practicing anymore. I would like to get saved. And Shelly goes, you would? And all of a sudden that day, our neighbor became a Christian. And here's the craziest thing. They don't go to our church. They go to another church, which ticks me off. Practice. Practice conversation starters. Practice 30 second testimony. Practice one minute testimony. Two minute testimony. Practice scriptures. Practice um, if somebody throws a line at you. When somebody throws a line at me and I don't know the answer, I say, you know what, that's a great question. Let me look into it and I'll get back to you. Or, or here's one for you. Well, you know what? That's a great question, but let's just get back to the real situation. But I'll deal with that question later on. Because the devil is always going to try to get you off track. Number two, pray. You don't, no, you don't pray just before, you always pray. I mean, even during the, when I'm on the airplane yesterday, I, pr I, I probably prayed half the flight. God, I have no idea what I'm doing, and it's not going smooth, but you've got to help me here. And all of a sudden, when, I, when he asked, what, what do you do? And I said, I'm a pastor. All of a sudden, boom, it turned around. Pray. Come against the forces of evil. I just want to speak the name of Jesus. I, in Jesus' name, I bind the forces of evil so I can share the gospel with this guy. And the last one I give to you is this, Witness. 
this whole thing, I'm not ready. Or I'll do it when the doors open. Here's the truth. How's that working for you? I mean, the doors never open for me. Very rarely, probably one out of a thousand times, the doors open. I mean, you got to sometimes knock at the door and sometimes you got to give it a little nudge. You never push. But witness. But I, 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 I'm not ready. Well, guess what? I'm not either. And I've been doing it a long time. Jesus shared the gospel, and I want to be like Jesus. Jesus wasn't a salesman. There's a difference between selling and sharing. I mean, a salesman is trying to get that sale, push it through. A person who shares, I'm not forcing it. But then again, I'm not backing down either. I take it as far as I can. So the question here is, what should I do or how will I do it? Here, well, here, here's the question that I have for you, okay? Figure out what is stopping you from witnessing and confront it through prayer. Practice and then do. I mean, when I'm in a taxi cab, which, because my job, once in a while I am in, I just don't sit in the back. I, I take advantage of the situation. I, I always ask, I, it's just, it's inevitable. I always say, so what country are you from? How long have you been here? So what religion would you be from that country? I already know what religion he's going to say. And then I always say this, in two, two minutes, because our drive's not long, tell me what you believe. And then I try to leave something with them. And I guarantee you, I probably will ask them if they would like to have one of these. Now, whether they read it or not, that's not my issue. Opal Redden, who was my teacher, she, in seminary, when I was doing my master's, she came in crying one day. I told this story a year ago into the class and ready to do a three-hour lecture. And she was crying like a baby and she's sitting behind her desk with her head down crying like crazy and we're all just sitting there like, finally somebody said, what's wrong? She said, at 1.30 in the morning, I looked out my window and the Holy Spirit told me to put on my bathroom and go next door to my neighbor's house because their light was on in the kitchen. And the Holy Spirit told me, go over there and share Jesus. And I rolled over and went to sleep. And when I woke up this morning, I looked over there and there was an ambulance. And they were putting my neighbor, his dead body, into an ambulance to take it away. And I ran across the grass and there was his widow, and she was crying. At 1.30 in the morning, they were sitting at the kitchen table. He wasn't feeling well, and he had a little pain in his heart, and they thought it was indigestion. And at 4.30 in the morning, he had a massive heart attack. And at 6.30, they take the, and Opal crying, she said, if I had been there at 1.30, I could have shared Jesus with them. And then she says, Ezekiel 33 says, if you're a watchman and you don't blow the horn, in other words, you don't witness, the blood will be on your hands. And I never will forget this day, that old teacher of mine, Dr. Opal Redden, God loves her, PhD in theology, raising her hands and she says, the blood of my neighbor is on my hands. Your zipper is down. Thank you for telling me. 
got something coming out of your nose, just wipe it. Thank you. Oh, the food. Thank you. The mascara. Thank you. This temporary stuff. Why are we so hesitant in sharing something that has eternal value? Well, I'm not good at it. So what? Neither am I. But just wait. You get to heaven and that person comes up to you and says, thank you for sharing Jesus. I'm here for eternity with you because you shared Jesus. Yes, it's easier to tell somebody about their zipper or their nose or the food. Hell's not against you on that. But please, don't let hell win. You'll receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. So if I don't have it, then I need to get the Holy Spirit's power so I do have it. 